Welcome to Freaky Friday all morning long, talking ghost stories and uh, tales of the supernatural and the undead that you've experienced in your house or in your lifetime. 800-222-1069. We'll be taking your stories all morning long. And right now, we're joined by an expert in the supernatural, Miss Becky Boyer of the Antietam Paranormal Paranormal Society. Good morning, Becky. Good morning. It's so nice to have you back here. You totally scared the bejesus out of me last year with your stories. And and this year, what we're really going to do is follow up on, on what you were working on last year. Yeah, last year we were getting ready to go to Engine One, the first Hagerstown hose company right here in Hagerstown. Uh-huh. And you went? Yes, we did. We've been several times since then, and it is it is a very active location. We love going to Engine One. It's kind of like home to us. <laughs> now, when you say active, I mean, obviously we're going to play some audio here uh, in just a second that proves how active it is, but... Uh, are you scared by the activity when you're there, or is this more like when you're reviewing the audio once you've left that you get freaked out? I honestly, uh, the only time you really get freaked out is when you're in an area pretty much by yourself or uh, with one other person and something seems threatening, but I don't really get freaked out very often. Uh, you kind of become immune to it after a while. <laughs> well, when you go to these places, you go to these places on purpose. Like, I do everything I can to stay away from ghosts. Right. You go to ghosts on purpose because people think they feel them or find them or whatever, and then you come. Do you feel a presence? Does it feel like there's another person in the room? Is it something you can describe? Because when Phil's in the room, I don't feel anything, <laughs> and I know he's there. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times um, you feel the, uh, the, a lot of people call it the sensation where the, hand or, the hair will stand up on your arms or the back of your neck. Okay. Um, kind of like you're feeling watched. Uh, in some mm. locations, like the Masonic Temple, we feel... Um, on certain levels, you just feel threatened, like you're not supposed to be there. Not necessarily like they're going to harm you, but mm -hmm. it's just like, get out. You need to leave this area. You're not supposed to be in here. Like something down in like the pit of your stomach. You exactly. Feel that yeah, gut. you just feel a wave of heaviness, like get out. Okay. okay. Wow. And what kind of things do you use to capture the sounds or do you have uh, like a box? On, is it like Ghostbusters? Is there a box on the floor that you suck the spirits into? No, no. no we yeah. use just the regular digital voice recorders. Uh, a lot of people use for like dictation in offices. Mm -hmm. Just the little mini um, Olympus recorders. and Like the stuff we see on the A&E and on Discovery Channel, you know, Ghost, yeah. um, ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, exactly. all those shows and stuff. Yeah. yeah, same types of things. Okay, well let's talk about some of the uh, sound recordings you've picked up with that digital equipment. Uh, this is from uh, the Hager Sound Engine 1 uh -huh. and this is audio you picked up now the beginning of it you'll hear people it's your team just talking to themselves and then we'll hear something in the background and I'll play it right now no, you're just there in the room now that sounds is, that sounds like high heels is walking. that you walking through the room no no that wasn't you at all no it was let's not. play it, let's play it one more time Could you see someone walking? Uh, at that point, we actually did capture in that area of the basement, we did capture a, um, a strange light anomaly. Um, it doesn't match up exact time, but it's a similar time frame. Wow. Um, but they were doing a session um, in the further, the front side of the basement, and the recorder was towards the back in uh, Aaron's Fox room, which actually where they store uh, one of the older fire engines. Um, and you can definitely tell that the footsteps are going towards the stairs that go upstairs and towards the other team that's in the front side of the basement now um we didn't hear this at the time and i tell you a fashion choice of heels on an investigation is not ideal so <laughs> nobody would have been wearing heels that sound like that okay well wow. let me i'm gonna jump to conclusions about the wearer of these heels a lady in heels in a fire company hmm. Hello. Pro. <laughs> She's a pro. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's the big question there, though, is, in fact, did you hear that sound when you were there? No. This no, is all stuff not. you just heard once you, you know. Yes, played it back later. later. Oh, yeah. my gosh. That is so crazy. Let's hear an even creepier example of something that went on that you didn't even hear at the time. Now, this one you said was your, you and your team having a discussion, and you can hear something in the background. Yes. We were talking about baselines. We always do the initial baselines when we go in, and we were talking about some strange things that were going on. And this was right in the middle. We didn't hear it at the time. Wow. I okay. just got chills. Let's do that one more time. You guys having a conversation, and this is what the tape picked up. Whoa. Now, what, now what's she saying? Well, you know, there was a lot of question at first. Is it a female? Is it a child? Is it a man kind of manipulating his voice? But... It sounds like it's saying mommy. It does sound exactly me, like it's... Let me hit it one more time. Let's see if we can... 
I could see that. It almost could sound like love you, too. Yeah. Did you guys think that? Because that's kind of what I hear. We had a whole bunch of ideas, but mommy was the most common, so that's what we stuck with after a while. Wow. Is this the sound of the undead? <sighs> <laughs> you guys, I'm really like I just got cold and I'm my palms are sweating now and I don't like this at all. I have chills from this. We're joined in studio by special guest Becky Boyer of the Antietam Paranormal Society. Becky, thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. Becky, the last time we talked to you a few minutes ago, I, it resulted in um, sweaty palms for me, some shivers up and down my spine and a cold sweat. <laughs> thanks for that. You're welcome. <laughs> now, we were laughing while we were in music there uh, about some of the projects you work on. And, and and we don't mean to laugh. We don't mean to make light of them. But, I mean, you know, you you really work in some weird, weird... Uh, like locales. Know, weird yeah. assignments. Yeah. I mean, these buildings all have histories, and they were all called something different. Let's chat real quick about what we were just... Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. It's in West and West, West Virginia. And when it closed, it actually was called Weston State Hospital. Okay. Um, the Lunasi Lunatic Asylum uh, was actually... It was called that when it opened back in the 1800s. And, Lunatic and, Asylum! And, I mean, that's what gets me. Is like uh, Obviously, there was no PC back in the late 1800s yeah. and everything. But it was called... Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Lunatic Asylum. I mean, I can't believe we were so... Crass like I that. I can't believe we were so insincere. Yeah, you know? I know. Come on down to Big Al's Lunatic and Mongoloid Asylum. <laughs> you got a freaky family member? Come on down. First month's free. I speak lobotomy 30% off in the month of October. <laughs> Lunatic Asylum. Okay, needless to say, the Old Western Hospital, this is in West Virginia. And uh, talk to me real quick about some of the things you saw and or heard there. Uh, well, I, I'll leave it up to my husband to tell his own story. But uh, I, the last time I was there, we were sitting in... Uh, the fourth floor, just doing uh, sessions, uh, EVP sessions, uh, electronic voice phenomenon sessions, just okay. to see what we could pick up. And about 50 feet down the hallway, there was a little girl standing. And it was one of those situations where you turn, you see it, you turn your head back, and then you look again, and she was gone. Whoa. But I got enough detail of her. She was probably about 12 years old. Um, she was wearing a light-colored dress. Um very frilly dress she had braids and she had hair that was curly around her face but she had no facial features it was just like gray and oh. that that freaked me out a little bit because you know you expect to see something yeah but there was nothing there i mean you could make out the detail of the hair and the dress but you yeah. could but see she had that no, there was face. no face she had no face Ew. Was she floating or she standing there? She was standing she there. She was standing there. I could there, see, baby. like, it looked like black stockings, but it wasn't just blacked out. I mean, she, you could see the, the line of her legs. Wow. So it was, yeah, it was very some, interesting. Some of the places you go to do your research is just crazy. I, I would never go to any place that was formerly called a hospital or a lunatic asylum. No, I wouldn't either, <laughs> even in broad daylight. I, it's, <laughs> it's nuts. Uh, not only do you have stories of the visions you've seen, you have some things uh, that uh, have gone on right here in the Hagerstown area. These are sounds that uh, you got from the Masonic Temple, I believe. And uh, we're going to start with the female one here. Tell me a little bit about what we're getting ready to hear. Uh, the female voice is actually, it was, um, oh, goodness. Uh the female was down in the basement towards the uh, storage area that they have. Um, we were not doing any type of sessions at all. We weren't even investigating. We were just doing a walkthrough. And one of our girls always carries her recorder and has it on just in case mm -hmm. right, you know, right, she right. catches something she wants to hear later on. And we caught this female moaning. Now, I don't know who would have made a moan like that. And I don't remember hearing anything like that. Neither, neither did she. All right. We'll give it a listen. See if it does indeed sound like a female moaning. And that's just her carrying okay, I don't know much in this big world, but yeah. I know that. <laughs> yeah. God, I haven't heard moaning like that in <laughs> months. I would imagine. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, apparently there's some sexual libido for those uh, in, in the, the afterlife. <laughs> uh, let's do this next one here. This is also sounds from the Masonic Temple. Now, this, you said you'd actually been set up for the session, and this was intentionally recorded. Yes. This uh, this recorder was sitting in their auditorium area. Okay. Uh, there was nobody on that level. Uh, all of us girls were in the sub-basement, and all the guys were on one of the top floors. So there was nobody around the recorder at this time. All right. Let's give this a listen. Wow. So there's some heavy ambient noise, but let's run through it one more time. I right. hear, come on up here. 
You can definitely hear a voice. And at the time, you didn't hear it to the naked ear. You weren't aware of that voice. But no. you heard this all once you got home. You started playing the tape back. Yes. And, you know, a lot of people would say, well, what was going on outside at the time? You can't hear enunciation like that from voices outside no, no. In that area. Right. So there's no way that we caught a little girl's voice. And especially the time frame, it yeah. was very early in the morning. Okay. Wow. Now, you guys have some stuff going on now. You're doing ghost tours, ghost hunts. Yes. At the Masonic Temple, we have a ghost hunt this weekend. Oh, um, yes. You're going back there after that experience. Yes. Uh, we have a whole bunch of ticket holders that are coming. So we're really excited to share the, the temple and all of its um, people mysterious occurrences. <laughs> and your Antietam Paranormal Society, where can people get in touch with you, find you? on the web and all that uh, we have a website uh, AntietamParanormalSociety.com um, we even you can find us on Facebook also let's get back to our friends here from the Antietam Paranormal Society this is Jeremy on the phone and we have uh, Becky of course in studio with us and thanks guys for both being with us now you've, you've shared some stories that are, will make the hair on the back of your neck stand up but tell us about the freakiest thing you've ever seen if it's the one I think Beck's talking about we is over Trans Allegheny and We've been there a handful of times, and I've been watching these things at the end of the one floor. And the one ghost hunter, the tour guide there, I asked him, I said, you ever seen anything weird? He goes, eh, like what? I said, down there at the end of the hall. He said, yeah, he said, it's about knee high, and it crawls across the floor, and it'll go up the wall. I said, okay. I said, I've seen it past four or five times. So we're following it, and he's standing at the entrance of the one hall. He goes, he screamed and took off running. I said, what's wrong? He goes, it just come up the hall, around the corner, and up the wall. It was probably five foot from him. We have no idea what it is, but <laughs> yeah, they're definitely weird looking. Now, now, when you say you saw something crawl and then crawl up a wall... Was it like in The Exorcist when the little girl is kind of crawling upside down, you know what I mean? Yeah, that, that, that's what it puts it in mind of, but it's a black mass. I mean, you can make out a shape, but you can't really tell what it is. Oh, wow, so it's just a black mass, huh? Yeah. And you've actually seen this. Becky, you've seen this? I have not seen it, but uh, all the girls that were with them at the one point, uh, they heard the scratching when it was going up the wall. It was like making a scratching sound on the wall. <laughs> Live with that. <laughs> Just one of the great stories <laughs> that we get from our friends, Becky and Jeremy of the Antietam Paranormal Society. Guys, Thank you for being with us today.